so urinary tract infection it is a bacterial infection in any part of the urinary tract that may be in the kidney or the ureters or the bladder or the urethra when it affects the lower urinary tract that means the bladder and the ure ureters urethra then it is known as simple cystitis that is a bladder infection but when it affects the upper urinary tract that means uh, if, when it involves the kidney it is known as pyelonephritis UTI is 50 times more common in women than about 5% per year developing symptoms. UTI is uncommon in men below 60 years of age, but the frequency is similar in men and women in older groups, so it is more common in women. Definition is, this is a urinary tract infection. It is an infection involving the kidneys ureters bladder and the urethra that means the urinary tract these are the structures that urine passes through before being eliminated from the body so you can see in the image it is a normal kidney uh, normal urinary system then in the infected one you can see the bladder the urethra and uh, then uh, the ureters and the kidney the, there is inflammation okay then common microorganisms are e coli that means e coli is 80 percent of the cases uh, are involved with e coli then enterococcus clepsila enterobacter proteus pseudomonas staphylococcus candida albicans so these are the uh, main microorganisms which causes the uti then classification it is uh, divided into five types the first one is asymptomatic uh, in this asymptomatic, asymptomatic means without any symptoms, there will be bacterial infection, that is, uh, there will be significant number of bacteria in the urine will be there, but without any usual symptoms such as burning during urination or frequent urination. Then acute cystitis, it indicates inflammation of the bladder wall. Then acute pyelonephritis, it implies inflammation uh, of the renal parenchyma in the collecting system. So in this acute pyelonephritis, uh, it is a inflammation of the kidneys or the upper urinary system. Then in your acute urethritis, it means inflammation of the urethra. Then acute prostatitis, it is a serious infection of the prostate gland. So these are the uh, five main classifications of the UTI according to the clinical presentation. A urinary tract infection is said to be complicated if it is in the upper tract. That means it, if, if it involves the kidneys, then it is said to be complicated. There will be complications. Then if the person has diabetes mellitus, so it is uh, more complicated. Then the per when the person is pregnant, when the person is male, or when the person has a weakened immune system, it is more complicated. Then the predisposing factors or the risk factors uh, which uh, which may cause the which may help in causing the urinary tract infections are the first one is factors increasing the urinary stasis like uh, stone or any type of tumor in the urinary tract then extrinsic obstruction like tumor or fibrosis of the urinary tract then urinary retention like uh, including neurogenic bladder then low bladder wall compliance then in case of renal impairment also then next is uh, when the foreign body uh, is there in, in the urinary tract that means uh, when there is any calculi or any catheter indwelling catheter in, uh, which is inserted inside the person then uh, there may be more chances of developing the urinary tract infections then um, urinary tract instrument instrumentation for the diagnostic purpose they will be inserting certain type of instruments like cystoscopy or urodynamics so for for the diagnosis or for the treatment they will be inserting the instruments mm. so due to that uh, insertion of the instrument also they may cause the uti then the third one is anatomic factors like congenital defects okay uh, there will be uh, if there is any congenital defects in the part of the urinary system then there will be chances of developing the uti then fourth, fourth one is the factors comprising the immune system due to aging okay when the person is old uh, or when the when the person has uh, HIV virus, then diabetes mellitus, then there are more chances of developing. Then functional disorders like constipation, then voiding dysfunctions, and other factors like pregnancy, um, multiple sex partners, poor personal hygiene. Okay, so these all are the risk factors, the factors that will help in contributing the uh, cause of the disease. This. Then next is the pathophysiology. First, uh, what will happen? The urinary tract above the urethra is normally sterile. 
okay several mechanical and physiologic defense mechanism include normal voiding with complete emptying of the bladder uterovesical junction competence and peristaltic activity that propels the urine towards the bladder so the, uh, from the upper urinary tract it means from the kidney the passage of urine will be passed from the, through the ureter then the ure uh, then the bladder and then the urethra antibacterial characteristics of urine are maintained by acidic ph less than six high urea concentration and abundant glycoproteins that interfere with the growth of the bacteria these defense mechanisms assist in maintaining the sterility and prevent the uti so normally the urinary uh, tract is protected by certain uh, antibacterial characteristics normally but when this defense uh, uh, this these defense mechanisms will help in maintaining the sterility but when uh, uh, when if any type of microorganism enters due to the any of the causative factors like stone tumors the neurogenic bladder urinary retention calculus catheter so if any of these uh, uh, risk factors or causative factors occurs in the patient then uh, the bacteria will enter inside the uh, urinary system then uh, when they will cause the uh, inflammation of the bladder ureter and the kidneys so after that uh, there will be uh, inflammatory response which will occur inside the urinary tract and then it will present with the uh, various signs and symptoms like uh, unable to urinate burning while urination then uh, f frequent pieces of urine strong smelling urine okay like that the signs and symptoms will appear so next let's discuss on the clinical manifestation the clinical man manifestations are a strong persistent urge to urinate the person the patient will will have the persistent urge to urinate then burning sensation while urinating will be there frequent and small amounts of urine passes would be there then urine that appears cloudy okay due to the bacterial infection the urine ap will appear cloudy then urine that appears red bright pink or color colored a sign of blood in the urine if there is uh, um, blood in the urine then the urine will appear bright pink or red then small uh, strong smelling urine pelvic pain okay will be there then for in the assessment and diagnostic findings history taking can be done physical examination will be done then urine tests urinalysis urine culture clean catch sample this all are to be done then we can find out if there if there is any uh, presence of w, uh, rise in the wbc or lymphocytes then uh, color of the urine ph of the urine all that we can see from the by doing the urine culture and urine analysis by um, by doing the urine analysis then by doing the urine culture we can identify what type of bacteria is present in the patient which what type of bacteria is atta attacking the patient's urinary system then other investigations we can do the ultrasound also then uh, this can be seen for hydronephrosis that means if there is uh, to find out any obstructions in the flow of urine then x-ray can be done voiding cystorethrogram this voiding cystorethrogram it is an x-ray of the bladder and the urethra to often a cystorethrogram a dye will be uh, a dye, uh, dye will be or contrast medium will be injected okay in injected through a catheter inserted into the urethra and uh, by doing that uh, they will view through an x-ray machine they will view the bladder and the urethra then uh, in intravenous pylogram also i've told you earlier i've explained you earlier what is intravenous pylogram this is an x-ray uh, here also by injecting the contrast media they will with the help of x-ray they'll view the yeast then in cystoscopy with cystoscope will be used to insert inside the uh, urethra and then they will insert uh, and they will examine the urethra and the bladder then ct scan can be done your uh, blood cultures will be done then in medical management in acute pharmacological therapy in uncomplicated case a single dose of administration short course it is three to four days regimens or seven to ten days regimen will be done the anterior bacterial the antibacterial then in complicated case uh, will will give the cephalosporin or ampicillin or aminoglycoside combination this is an, an this the antibiotic which is given for seven to ten days then trimethoprim 
this should, uh, this is uh, these are the commonly used medications for fluoxacin this all are the uh, medications for the reducing the infection uh, nitrofurantin phenazopyridine this all are to be given in a, uh, this all are to be given to relieve the analgesi then um, this nitrofurantin should not be given in patients with renal insufficiency because it is ineffective at glomerular filtration rates of less than 50 ml per minute and may cause peripheral neuropathy then uh, levofosacin it is another fluoroquinolone but it is a good choice for short-term therapy for uncomplicated mild to moderate UTIs so uh, the commonly used drosophilosporin and ampicillin or aminoglycoside combination it is most effective in long-term pharmacological therapy uh, there may be relapse of the UTI that means it may occur again after uh, after the patient has recovered EK it may uh, occur again in that uh, we will do the long-term pharmacological therapy the woman with recurrent UTIs may be instructed to begin treatment to her own whenever symptoms occur and to contact, contact her health provider only when symptoms persist, fever occurs, or the number of treatment episodes exist from 4 in a 6-month period. If infection recurs after complete antimicrobial therapy, another short course or 3 to days of full dose antimicrobial therapy may be prescribed for every uh, attack. For every attack the antimicrobial therapy should be given then after treatment relation of urine low dose preventive therapy each night at bedtime is often prescribed okay so um, for the prevention uh, after treatment and sterilization of urine the low dose preventive therapy of trimetoprim with or without sulfamitazole should be given at night time then in the patient education what we can do uh, we can say to the patient to not delay any urination when it is necessary a high fluid intake is essential clean the urethra meters then the opening of urethra after the intercourse has been uh, to be some of some has been of some benefit however when this is done with an antiseptic or placebo ointment an ointment containing no active ingredient does not appear to matter okay we should advise the patient to drink a lot of fluids then uh, uh, not to delay any re urination then drinking cranberry juice and low dose of antibiotics to be taken at night so this will all prevent in the recurring of the cystitis in nursing management assessment of signs and symptoms presence of pain frequency urgency changes in urine then about the uh, no, uh, patients know this about the prescribed antibacterial medications are assessed then the first uh, one is acute pain for for this we have to uh, reduce the pain for that we can assess the onset duration and level of pain provide the analgesics provide the comfortable position reassure and provide directional therapy give psychological support then second one is impaired urinary elimination for this we have to assess for changes in the usual voiding pattern, instruct the patient regarding the reason for symptoms, increase high fluid intake or administer IV fluids. Then the third one is hypothermia. Then the fourth one is risk for uh, reinfection. So these all are to be assessed uh, by the uh, by us as a nurse and uh, to provide the psychological support also and to provide the uh, urinary voiding pattern normally.